So we know The Sims 5 or Project Renee is going to have some multiplayer elements. We don't know exactly what they're going to be yet, but they have given us some information and this information indicates a kind of direction they may or may not go down. Based on a recent podcast and interviews with Sims producers, it seems like Project Renee is not going to be some like huge multiplayer MMO thing like World of Warcraft. I've made jokes about it before, but the only thing that does really worry me is that we don't really know if it's going to be a solely multiplayer game or if it's going to be a single player experience with multiplayer elements. They have suggested that you're probably still going to be able to play a full on single player experience but they haven't really stated whether or not this will be limited by the fact that it's multiplayer so we're going to have to wait and see on that one. But we can be confident that it's likely going to be a single player experience primarily based on the fact that they have told us that the game is going to have packs like previous Sims games they have stated that they're going to be doing packs differently but they're still going to have packs and I feel like that would be very very hard to navigate in a multiplayer game where The Sims has so many packs. A lot of multiplayer games do have packs but they only really release like one pack every year or one pack like every two or three years for that matter so the packs themselves are not that deep but with The Sims 5 I couldn't see it working with that many packs and multiplayer so I have a good feeling that it will be mostly single player. In terms of what it could could look like though. I think it's really important to look at other games because multiplayer could mean so many different things. In fact, in The Sims 4 right now, there is actually a multiplayer mod. This allows you to literally play the game with your friends. As long as you have the same packs installed, you can literally play together completely fine. So I mean, technically it's already possible. Two games that I would like to look at firstly are Animal Crossing New Horizons and Disney Dreamlight Valley. Both of these games are basically single player experiences is they're not designed to primarily be multiplayer experiences but in many ways they are and that's due to the multiplayer features. Both Animal Crossing New Horizons and Disney Dreamlight Valley have a feature where you can visit your friend's map or in Animal Crossing visit your friend's island and you can't really grief which means you can't really touch or interact with anything, you can't steal anything, you can't demolish anything, you can just look but you can't touch. There are some small things that you can do which benefit the owner of that island or owner of the map if it's Disney Dreamlight Valley but you can't directly cause negative things to happen and it's also invite only which means like not anybody can come in only certain people you choose can come in and there's a lot of control around it so it's just like somebody's looking at your place almost like it's a museum. Having a think about The Sims 5 in my personal opinion this is like the least invasive way that they could go about multiplayer. They've already said that The Sims 5 is coming with apartments. I have a very strong negative feeling that we're actually not going to be able to have houses that you can build. I have a very, very horrible feeling inside that you can only have an apartment. So could it be that your friends can simply just visit your apartment? Maybe they can interact with your character when they're gone. I'm not sure how that would work though, because like, what if they did like flirty interactions with your character and things like that. I, do you know what I mean? This is what I don't understand. This is how like I just can't imagine a Sims multiplayer working. What if somebody enters my house even if I let them like a friend and they got flirty with my Sims character and woohooed with them and I didn't even know. I feel like that would be a little bit bad. I feel like it would be really really hard to go about like a, a multiplayer <laughs> in The Sims without it getting a little bit seedy. This is why I think this whole like museum approach of like you look but you can't touch. I think that's a good idea. I don't know how you feel about that. Another route that they could go down which I feel like could be quite likely is the similar route to how Palea went down. Palea is one of those like cozy farming life simulation games. It's a little bit like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon all those kinds of games together but Palea is actually a totally online experience. There are two main kinds of areas in the the game. The first one is your private lot and then you have the second area, the open world areas. Now in your private lot nobody can visit this area unless you let them, unless you specifically give them a key to enter. When they do enter they can't, again they can't grief, they can't mess anything up for you but you can give other players more control so you can manage not only who goes into your area but you can manage what they can do. But then when you go out into the open world you see other players 
roaming around. The open world is the area that you can't build on, you can't really control. This area is a bit of a free for all and you can see other players with you as you're playing the game yourself. To have this dynamic contrast between your private house, your private dwelling where you can build on and you can do anything you want, but then you have the open world which you don't own but you do see other players, I think is an interesting mix. Based on the teasers that we've seen from The Sims 5 as well as well, it seems like something like this may even be likely. Again, having your own private apartment that's yours, but then you go into the wider open area where you can interact with other players. Maybe like something like this could be likely. Although again, I feel like something like this would probably not work out very well because the problem with The Sims 4, that no previous Sims game has had this problem, is that the world is just a big set dressing. It's not really a world and you can't really customize it very well. You know, in The Sims 3, for example, you could create your own worlds. In The Sims 4 right now, at least you can build on different lots in the worlds. If we had this system kind of like Paleo, where you have your own customizable apartment, but the outside area is not customizable, this would mean that you wouldn't even be able to edit the lots and that would be pretty bad. So I personally don't feel like that one would go down very well. I've said before, I don't want The Sims to, to be like with loads of other people. It just doesn't work for The Sims. Sim Sims are chronically online and lonely. This is why we live in the virtual fantasy world. No, we don't have friends. So no, something like this would not work out. Another approach I'd like to see is Stardew Valley. In Stardew Valley on PC, you can actually enter co-op mode and you can basically create a cooperative farm with your friends. Obviously it's primarily single player experience. So the farm is owned by one player, but you can create outhouse buildings and your friends are called farm hands and your farm hands can basically just go around with you, helping you out on the farm and things. But you can also do a lot of the other main things like you can get married with an NPC, you can go to festivals, like you can basically do almost everything as a co-op farmhand. Now, if we applied this logic to The Sims 5, maybe it could work kind of like The Sims 4 multiplayer works now, where you have a whole household of Sims and you can get somebody else to come in and take control of one of those Sims. I think it would be really interesting if you were playing as a household with two members, I don't know, a husband and a wife, and your real life partner could come in on their laptop whilst you're on your laptop and they could both live in the same household and do different things together in the game. I do question that though in The Sims because obviously it works with an action queue functionality and I feel like it could cause so many bugs. As we know, The Sims is a very buggy game. Not just The Sims 4, to be honest, all Sims games do have their bugs. I just feel like the nature of life simulation is very buggy, but I think it would be even more buggy if they implemented multiple play in a similar way to how they did in a game like Stardew Valley co-op mode. Another game I want to look at is Viverland. This is like an indie published upcoming life simulation game. Supposedly this one is actually supposed to be coming out this year, although I'm not too sure about that. But they've mentioned how the game is going to be an online multiplayer game, but it's going to function basically kind of like The Sims. They've said that you could invite up to seven friends to live in your world with you, so a total of eight people and apparently all eight of these people can have their own individual houses in the same world. So it's kind of like a little, it's like multiplayer but it's not chaotic, it's quite controlled. I think something like this sounds really interesting to me. I don't know how it's going to work in Viva Land, I have absolutely no idea but I think it would be cool because you could fill your world with random NPCs but then maybe you could designate one house to invite another player to live in and then they own that house and it's locked to them and they can do whatever they want with the build. I think that would be a really interesting one. They stated that in Viva Land that you're going to be playing in a small little town, a little neighborhood by yourself or with your friends. I think it's a really interesting concept. For me personally, I quite like this idea if in The Sims 5 they did something similar to that of Viva Land's idea of maybe having your own small little town and maybe you can invite one of your friends to live in a specific lot, but they can't edit any other lots they can't build on any other lots they're just like a guest in your world and they can only live in this specific lot I think that would be very interesting as long as I was able to like kick them out if I didn't want them in there anymore my personal favorite approach to multiplayer in The Sims 5 would be like Animal Crossing or Disney Dreamlight Valley where you look but you can't touch I like how in Animal Crossing New Horizons you can do a little island tour with your friends and I feel like the multiplayer side of New Horizons when the game was being developed it was kind of just just like a small bonus feature yet it turned out to be like the biggest feature of the game and 
so many people were doing all these creative really cool things in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Do you guys remember lockdown when people were doing like Animal Crossing fashion shows and island tours and stuff? Like I feel like a multiplayer thing like that could work really really well. You guys let me know what you think. That's my personal favourite approach. There are of course some problems with the idea of having multiplayer though which I feel like need to be addressed. Firstly DLC. The Sims has a fetish for packs as well as a fetish for money. How on earth could it work with DLC because you know The Sims 4 Gallery right now is an absolute disaster because it's impossible to remove stuff from the gallery if you don't own packs that they built with which is just so stupid. It says you can but you can't actually do it. You can't actually sort by only stuff containing from packs that you own. You can include stuff from certain packs but you can't exclude stuff from certain packs meaning the gallery, The Sims 4 Gallery is just so unusable because it's just washed out with all this stuff you can't use if you don't own all the packs that other people have used. It's so stupid. But to integrate a full-on multiplayer experience with this whole exclusivity of if you don't have the packs then you can't join in, like I just feel like it would be absolute hell. It would be absolute hell. I do think the Sims pack system does pose a threat to a multiplayer model. Although again, with a game like Animal Crossing New Horizons, it does still work. So they do actually have a DLC. I think it's called Happy Home Paradise. Paradise. This DLC does come with some brand new furniture for the game and if you don't own that furniture but your friend does, even though you can't use the furniture, you can still tour their island and see the furniture. Maybe something like that could work out well in the game, but because The Sims is primarily like a PC experience, such, such on Sims is console player phobic, it is a primarily PC experience and that leaves it vulnerable to hacking, meaning that you could probably hack in stuff from certain packs even if you don't own them if they did this similar approach to Animal Crossing where you can look at other people's stuff even if you don't own it and you can go in the builds. It would make it very prone to hacking. People have already done it with The Sims 4. So I feel like that would de-centivize, de I forgot the word, like de-incentivize EA from doing that with The Sims multiplayer. On the subject of money, another problem with the idea of multiplayer is it makes me terrified that they're going to do an online subscription. If they made it so like the single player experience is free but then you have to purchase a subscription for the online experience that would honestly break me. The Sims 4 pack system it's enough. We've got packs, we've got microtransactions, it's enough. If we got a subscription on top of that it would be absolute hell. I'm telling you it would be absolute hell. I personally just couldn't imagine. I can imagine them doing it but I can't imagine it working. Another problem that I have with the concept of a Sims multiplayer is mods and custom content. Mod Mods and custom content are so crucial to simulation games in general. If mods were not possible or accessible in The Sims 4, I'm really confident this game would have died like years ago because it's such a strong thing. They have spoken before a lot about user generated content and it gives me the impression they may be somehow trying to find a way of integrating mods into like the official game, I don't know. But it's safe to say if you include multiplayer, it would make modding very, very tough. And I think if you couldn't mod the game, it would cause a lot of issues. Related but unrelated, the game City Skylines 2, there's so many issues with mods with this game right now. It's really difficult to mod it. Modding's not very accessible. There's not very many mods for Cities 2. City Skylines 1, the previous game, downloading and installing mods is extremely easy and is in fact officially supported through Steam Workshop. And one of the main reasons why a lot of people still play City Skylines 1 instead of moving on to City Skylines lines too is because you can get mods with the first game but with the second game it's not that simple and I would hate for The Sims 5 to crash and burn because they wouldn't let people use mods so that's another issue with multiplayer. Honestly I truly believe they need to shut up about this multiplayer thing and I personally think they just need to create a remake of The Sims 1, 2 and 3 mashed together and label it The Sims 5. This is what I honestly think they should do and keep it primarily single player. If you want to know in more detail why I'm a little bit more worried about The Sims 5, make sure you check out this video here. Also, let me know how you think multiplayer should be added to the game. I really want to hear your ideas. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.